Jumping right back into the action now, a game that I was glued to the the majority of really the afternoon yesterday was this Steelers and this Commanders game that was definitely one of the highlights, I think, going into the, the early window. Of course, then you have the, uh, the Chiefs game and everything like that and how good that ended up being, right? And a couple more elsewhere scattered around, but this one um, was really... One I was paying attention to, not just because of my fandom, but obviously it was the uh, the first real test for the Steelers. And uh, two teams that were first place in their division going into this game and the commanders on how good they were doing. Russell Wilson and all the, the hype around him, how the Steelers offense was really hitting on all cylinders with him as their quarterback. This real test that the Steelers had to face at this point in the season ended in a way that I think how I think most Steelers fans have become accustomed to and I think just how Mike Tomlin really loves watching these games come down to one their defense making plays making big stops you know and getting everyone involved and hyped up and everything like that but also great quarterback play we haven't seen that combination truly since Big Ben Roethlisberger obviously retired and the Steelers haven't had that great defensive performance along with Ben making plays right and um they really just have to rely on the defensive side of that, right? Where their defense makes big stops and you're really left wondering with their quarterback situations in the past whether or not they were going to be able to step up in these big moments. But evidently, they have a guy now that they're able to, to rely upon as well. And I'll speak about that more in just a second. But just in the context of this game, uh, the Steelers won by 1 point, 28-27, to to go now to 7-2. and two. Washington loses for the first time in about a month now they go to 7-3 and three and drop to second place in the NFC East after Philadelphia defeated the Cowboys, so it drops them down one spot. And funny enough, the Commanders' last loss overall was to an AFC North team in the Ravens. Also, that one was a close game, and uh, yeah, Commanders have, have lost two of their games have been to AFC North teams, so both evidently pretty good teams overall, so that is something and um, this is the first home loss also for the Commanders this year as well. And um, it's the first, a lot of firsts in this game. This is the first game also that Russell Wilson threw his uh, his first interception since he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jeremy Chin intercepted him in the uh, the third quarter, I believe. And um, it's the fourth win in a row for, for the Steelers as well. Still in first place after this win. The Ravens continue to win, setting up a huge game next week between the Steelers and the Ravens and uh, Pittsburgh scored a touchdown in each quarter and held Washington to zero points in the fourth quarter so the Steelers went 7-7-7-7 and uh, the Commanders you know just failed to score in that fourth quarter which any sort of points would have obviously most likely given them the win but again that is something that the Steelers have uh have sort of built a reputation to in the second half or at least towards the end of the games where They've done a very good job of just shutting teams down. And their defense over the last couple weeks might have been giving up more points than maybe you're accustomed to. Um, Why well, say that? They've only given up 27. This is the most points that their defense has given up since the, uh, since the Colts game. Or actually since the Cowboys game where they gave up 20. But everything else has been less than 20. So maybe not so much on that point. But it is something that is becoming a... A habit now for the Steelers defense and overall from the performances in this game Russell Wilson didn't have a fantastic game he was 14 of 28 for uh, 195 yards and I actually have that up here for you guys to also see um, three touchdowns one interception he was sacked three times Jalen Warren actually led the team in yards he had 66 while Najee Harris had 53 yards and he scored the lone rushing touchdown for the Steelers. George Pickens had another impressive game. He had the most receptions on the team with five, the most yards with 91, and he scored a touchdown. Mike Williams had one reception, 32 yards, where he scored what turned out to be the game-winning touchdown. And uh, Pat Fryermuth also contributed with only 17 yards, but a touchdown and three receptions. And on the other side, the Commanders didn't play a, a bad game, honestly. Um, Jaden Daniels had 202 yards, no touchdowns, and no real involvement in the rushing game, which is a huge credit to the Steelers' defense. Jaden Daniels was 17 of 34 
15 or not 15 50 percent overall on the day he was sacked three times in that game as well and uh no Brian Robinson which was a huge miss because of how big not only he is individually but the combination of him and Austin Eckler really is a big point of emphasis for the commanders on one thing that they've done a lot uh, of improvement on so him missing was a was a big hit but still the commander scored three rushing touchdowns two of them to Austin Eckler one of them to Jeremy McNichols and Terry McLaurin was uh was having a good day against Joey Porter Jr. Um, he had a couple big receptions and a couple nice catches five receptions for 113 yards to lead all receivers but this game broke down in a very you know back and forth game Very entertaining, 100%, um, between two teams that you'd expect to kind of put on this performance, two first-place teams in their division. And the Steelers actually led in this game on the road after George Pickens had that crazy touchdown to lead 7-0. Then um, they tried a fake field goal, and some people don't really like it. Some people think that it's just uh, a way to kind of to do too much in that scenario, but I didn't hate it. He was so wide open. James Pierre was the the player that dropped it. He he was so wide open because the the defender kind of ran into the pile to kind of add an extra rusher to try and block the punt. And I actually like that call because if he catches it, no one's saying anything, and he was wide open. He just dropped it. So, yeah, of course it came back to bite them, and the, the commanders capitalized by scoring a touchdown, but... In hindsight, for I, you only take hindsight into account when it's so obvious like that. Like, he had nobody around him, and he just dropped it. They were saying how he had practiced that, or they, they'd practiced that throughout the week. So, I didn't hate it, and um, still, the Commanders tied it up 7-7. Seven to seven, And from that point on, the Steelers scored again in the second quarter, like we talked about, Pat Fryermuth scoring that one. But Washington... Really, from that point on, they cut it to 14-10 to before executing a 15-play, 94-yard touchdown drive to then lead at halftime 17-14 uh, to after that, that touchdown, which was a killer because the Commanders got the ball to start the second half, and they scored again. So now the Steelers are down 10 points, and the Commanders are in a very good spot, honestly. But luckily for the Steelers, they responded with a touchdown, and... It, uh, it got to a point where the Commanders added another field goal to make it 21-27 to when the Steelers were orchestrating a great drive. You know, Jalen Warren was running the ball very well, but very harshly done there at the end where he fumbled it on the one-yard line and the Steelers, you know, discredited a big opportunity where they could have taken that one and maybe scored a touchdown, maybe scored three points. It would have made a difference either way um, in this game, but it wouldn't have been so close, obviously, but still... Great play by the the Commanders' defense to force that turnover and dodge a bullet there. And um, they end up doing nothing with it. And Pittsburgh get the ball back there once they force that punt. And that's when Mike Williams scored the touchdown to make it 28-27. to And the Commanders still, for a young team, really in their first year of all these new pieces, they were executing a good drive. And it got to fourth down where... The controversy popped up, right, where the uh, the spot was a little bit dodgy. Some people thought he got a first down. Some people thought it was the right call. I thought it was the right call. Um, but when it's so close like that, it, in all honesty, in real time, I thought they were going to give him that first down because just like I, I've seen too many times where it's been like that. So I thought they were just going to give him the first down. But once it got a little bit closer, they started reviewing it. And uh, it's huge. It's huge because of the fact that they called it short of a first down. If they called it a first down and then they reviewed it, I think uh, there wasn't enough evidence to overturn it either way. So the Steelers were pretty fortunate there that they called it short because the evidence wasn't really telling. Other than the fact that Zach Ertz's knee was down and uh, DeMonte Casey's hand actually touched him, That was pretty clear, and you could argue that he was still short, but the fact that they called him down first rather than uh, getting the first down I thought was huge. So the the Commanders turned it over. You thought that was almost the end of the game, but the Commanders still had all their timeouts, I'm pretty sure, and it came down to a fourth down. Ironically enough, like like the Steelers' defense had, the Commanders' defense, all they had to do was 
presumably stop the Steelers on fourth down and they were going to get the ball back either way, whether or not the Steelers were bluffing and they they just let the time run out or they actually went for it and the commanders could have stopped them and they would have benefited them greatly. But of course, we all know how it ended. The uh, the hard count got rookie defensive lineman J- Jerzon Newton to jump off sides and uh-huh, the Steelers sideline went crazy. That was the end of the game because... The Commanders didn't have any more timeouts, obviously, and the Steelers escaped with a one-point victory. And overall, the Steelers held Jaden Daniels to three carries for five yards, the lowest all season for them. So they really made it a point of emphasis to uh, to mitigate the, uh, the rushing game for Jaden Daniels. And what's become a trend with this Steelers defense, like I said before, in the second half where they come up in big moments, the Steelers now have outscored their opponents 135 to 55 in the second half. They have a plus 80 scoring margin, which leads the NFL in that category. And it's, again, I want to make sure I emphasize that it's not just this season where all of a sudden their defense is coming up with big stops, they're holding teams in the second half. That's been there. But now I feel like you have a guy like Russell Wilson who can execute in those high pressure moments and have the high the same level of high execution as this defense where this defense makes a stop and Russell Wilson knows how great of an opportunity that is and he understands that all right they got the ball back for me I'm going to go execute and he's been in those moments obviously Super Bowls big game winning game tying drives and things like that conference championships and whatnot with the Seahawks playing with a similar style of great defense great running attack like he had in Seattle. He's been in these moments. So now I think that's what's really, I think, emphasized this uh, this relationship with Russ and why he's playing so good is because of how much it resembles the Seahawks' days. And maybe the Steelers' defense isn't the Legion of Boom, obviously, historically, but it, it has a similar, you know, sort of blue pr- blueprint. And uh, I think Russell Wilson now is why this Steelers' team is not only executing more in these critical moments, but they've completed the puzzle with with uh, Russell Wilson. So that's been extremely pleasant to see because I've seen the Steelers mess up a bunch of those uh, a bunch of those drives just this year with the mishandled snap with Justin Fields against the Colts. That was obviously huge. So having a guy like Russ is obviously massive for them. And uh, with the extremely low turnovers, also this team has really stopped hurting themselves. And again, in this Washington game. There was a lot of penalties by, you know, the corners with uh, holding calls and face masks and things like that that didn't help themselves out too much. But on offense mainly, like I said, they're not really hurting themselves where they're taking sacks on second down or they're missing assignments where someone comes unblocked or they, uh, they have those penalties, like I said, that puts them behind the chains. There's not confusion on routes or anything like that. That's where, again, the level of calmness, experience that comes with Russell Wilson has painted this picture of the Steelers and how well they're executing in late game situations. And that's exactly how I think they like to win all in all. Mike Tomlin, the defensive mind that he is, knowing that he has a great defense and now a quarterback that can execute at this high level, sort of like Big Ben did for them as well a couple years ago. It's uh, the, the, the Steelers are feeling as good as anybody. And are they contenders? We're not going to answer that question now, but this was definitely a big win for them. So all in all, we'll leave that topic there. We have a couple more to get to on today's show. One of them, we're going to talk about the Chicago Bears and the Patriots game and um, just what we took away from that, mainly from the Chicago Bears and what they need to do going forward. So stick with us. We'll be right back in just a few seconds.